All right, we just got in the water, not five seconds, and I got we got a bird. I got a bird tangled in the line already. A big old uh, what is pelican. This is gonna be fun. Right here on the front side of the tank. Maybe go. All right, I can't. I'm burning my fingers on it. Away from that piling. Get in between him and that boat. Get him the boat. Get him in the boat. Slow down, slow down. I can't catch up. Right here on that wing, right next to us. You can see your thing hanging off of him. Right there. Wing. Yeah, I see. Yeah. He's gonna bite the Give me something. Looks like the towel. garage is in here, right here. Nice job. Got him? We get the hooker remover? We get the hooker remover? I got it, I got it, I got it. Nice job. Nice job. Hey guys, today is our 56th video in a row. Today we're doing some inshore saltwater fishing and we can't go offshore, it's still blowing over 20 knots today, but we decided to do some saltwater fishing and I found some bait, so I'm gonna try to catch some little baby mullets before we get to fishing. Yeah, we're just exploring Peanut Island here. Man, what a beautiful Tuesday. We love Florida. Darcel Sizzle stalking some bait fish over there again. See how she did. Monster bait, monster fish. Oh, that's okay. Looks like it's not rest. Oh, it's a mutton. Boom. Short mutton, I think. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Alright, so we are basically in the inlet. Well, we are like on the inside of the inlet here uh, at the Lake Worth Inlet. And I just hooked up on a nice little short mutton in the inlet. And um, he just ate a live shrimp. It was a big old shrimp. Just casted it out. And um, yeah, so pretty cool. We might be able to catch some keepers. Let's see. Watch it go up, please. I knew it, man. My battery's dead on my camera. Of course. You gotta go? You can't disturb him. Probably. Live mullet. We're gonna pull the rod. We're gonna pull the rod. You can't pull us over still, right? I don't know what he's doing. He's watching. All right, let's get him. It's real. I'm going to run right up on him. Both boats are watching us. We're in the net. We don't have it. You can't put the in the net. We're so unprepared. You're going to have to grab this fish. I am going to grab this fish. All right. Straight down. I can't do anything. Oh. oh. We just got totally... Totally hammered by everything going on. Darcy had a fish on. No, a big mullet. It was like a 18-inch mullet had a fish on, and it got. And then the cops pulled up, and then they almost ran into my boat. They ran over to anchor, had to reverse real quick. Then he almost hit us again, and then that fish jumped off. And then my other line <laughs> went screaming, right? Yeah. And a little mullet, and then <laughs> my battery died on my camera, and then so <laughs> we're chasing this mullet. <laughs> Not we're, chasing, mullet. we're chasing this monster. It was probably a monster jack. We're chasing this monster jack around the inlet, with a cop following us. And I had to pull up the anchor and, and everything else. It was yeah. a mess. And our other line got completely cut off. Yeah, so. and, the, and, the, and the SR6 almost got spooled because I couldn't get the anchor up fast enough. And there's a cop in the way. It was a disaster. I'm not sure how much we got on, <laughs> on camera. We'll see when we get back. We got two rides going off right now. I'm about to get spooled. Let's school the jacks. Get over there. Turn the boat. Turn the boat. Look at my spool. I think I'm under you. Go, 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 go. Get up. I'm driving. I'm getting line. Neutral. My fish is going to the deep water. The deep hole. We're fishing now. <laughs> Pretty sure we both got two jacks, but we were pulling up the anchor and decided to drift um, because we saw a boat next to us. We were hooked up on a double. They both had two fish. So we saw these jacks blowing up on mullet. It was the coolest thing ever. And we casted out our mullet that I caught this morning. And then I hooked up, Brian hooked up, and then I hooked up. And I think they're decent fish. So mine is getting pretty close. <laughs> oh my God, it's a monster. <laughs> I'm 
Get them around the boat. Nice. Ten pounder. Watch out, watch out. Good. Get them, get them, get them. Get them, get them. Get them, get them. Don't break them off. Woo! One fish! <laughs> That's one! This fish is beating me up. This is Darcy's job. Woo! <laughs> oh, I like that long butt on that ride. Look. Yeah. Check out my fish while Brian's working on that pole. You can see circle hook got right in the corner of the mouth over here, just like the circle hook's supposed to do. And this was a, um, what was this? I had a, was this a shrimp? I don't know. I know, I believe it was a mullet, not a shrimp. I'm sorry. That rod is bent over, doubled over over so there. This is our tsunami bass rod you always see us use. Doubled over. I gotta get the hook. Oh, nice fish. I'll Thank grab him. Fish. I'll grab him. This is about the same fish as the big school jacks. Here, here, come on. Woo! <laughs> fish number two. In the corner of the mouth. Let me show you. Woohoo! Ah! Right, we're gonna go ahead and release these fish. I took a couple pictures with them. There's so many jack crevals here in South Florida. They get even bigger than this. They get up to 30, 40 pounds, monster fish. These are probably a good solid 10 pounders, but um, I could probably keep them and give them to somebody, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna release them together. So let's see. I'm gonna shake them back and forth. Are we in gear? No. no. All right, here he goes. That's one. That's two. There he goes. Awesome. All right. I don't know yet. Yeah, that's a fish. I think so, yeah. Make sure we didn't hook the bottom or something. All right. So we were just moving to our next. This is a nice jack. We were just moving to our next location, and uh, we were going to go check out this cool upwelling of water that comes out from underneath the salt water here. And I guess it has something to do with Rybovich and the big yacht centers that are here but it's a big hot water pump that just pumps out all this hot water all day long from underneath the ground, underneath the uh, sand. And apparently a lot of big fish hang out here. And we're just trolling one, one line, my favorite Uzuri 3D crystal minnow, and we just hooked up on a nice fish. Pretty sure this is a nice jack. I've got suntan lotion all over my hands. I'm sliding. I was, I was midway putting on suntan lotion when the rod started screaming. <laughs> oh, my hands got slimy. Oh no. Fortunately, I don't know the name of this fish, but it's some kind of fish that sits on the reef, some type of porgy, I believe. Um, but very gorgeous fish. You can see how gorgeous. So yellow. Awesome fish. But I instantly hooked up. As soon as we just started fishing this area, put my little shrimp down, my live shrimp, and 10 seconds later, I had this fish on. All right, he's going released. Tackle time! Alright guys, as usual, we're going to tell you exactly what tackle we use today. And a lot of this tackle um, is going to start sounding familiar to you because we've used some techniques today that we've uh, used before and especially in our A to Z snook fishing video, a lot of this tackle is going to be in there. Alright, so the plan of attack today was to check out Palm Beach Inlet. Now we fished there before, not really a dedicated trip like this before and we never trailed our little flash boat up there, so we were pretty excited. Uh, so. Main thing we always gotta worry about first is bait. All right, I had some dead bait in the freezer, so I brought along some dead bait just in case. But then on the way there, I bought four dozen shrimp. Live uh, shrimp. Live, yes, live shrimp. So uh, you know, you can't go wrong with live shrimp. And so we figured uh, if no, and nothing, uh, nothing else, we'd have some good, nice bait there. All right. I also bought a popper cork for that, but we didn't end up using it. But a popper cork and a shrimp is a great way to catch a fish anytime. All right. Uh, so then we went and we found some bait. We got some live bait. Darcy was excellent with the live bait, and uh, we had a couple spots, and we found some, and we used a cast net to get some live mullet. Um, now, to me, that makes the trip successful in itself, because yeah. you know, we got out there like 10 o'clock, crack a new vision team again, um, and if you can get live bait, you can catch the fish, so, uh, so that's, and that's what happened today, all right? Yeah, so 
So we had like three different size mullets, and that's always good to have a variety to see what the fish are eating. But we had like three big yeah. hogs, like over 12 inches, some medium ones, and then some little finger mullets that are about the size of my finger. Um, <laughs> right, finger mullets. So we had an assortment of bait, so that was great. Yeah, that was awesome. And then, uh, you know, there's a spot that you anchor up there in the middle of the, uh, in the middle of the, uh, what's that thing called? The Lake inlet. Lake Worth Inlet. Lake <laughs> yeah. Worth Inlet. Lake Worth Inlet. So we anchored up there, and we, we had some lines just free lined off the top. Now the size of your hook is going to is going to vary with your uh, size of your bait, of course. Now we got this is our standard rod. You've seen it before. We got the SR6 and a tsunami rod, uh, 20 pound tough line braid, and then we got a 40 pound leader. All right, pretty pretty big leader for this little pole, but we're in the ocean. I just want to say we decided to start with 40 and not go lower, just so we could get bites. And um, you know, 40 seemed to work all day for us. If we weren't getting bites, we probably would have gone down to 30 and then to 20 pound. Uh, but 40 seemed to work all day, no problem. Right, yeah, usually I would start with 30, uh, maybe even 20 for snook and stuff like that, but we know there's monster jacks in there, so we went with the 40. Um, and so for the finger mullets, the little mullets, I was using a 3.0 uh, mustad hook and just free line those out, which just means no weight or nothing, just throw them out the back. And then... Uh, we had two rods for the bottom. Right, now we had two rods and going for the bottom, and I was using, I don't know where my hook is on this thing, way up here, but I was using a, a 6-0 mustad hook for the big mullets. And you see I got a weight on here. I got an egg sinker. I think it's two, this ounce. Is a two ounce. All right. Now this is sliding here. So I got my, I got my braid and I got my weight and I got my uh, swivel, swivel. <laughs> and then I got my 40 pound here. Now you really should have some mono uh, with this uh, weight on here to slide on a little bit better. I wouldn't suggest putting it right on a braid like I did, but you know, sometimes we do what we do out there on the boat, right? I rigged that one up. I did. Sorry. No, it's okay. I would have done the same. And then we had no beads. You should have a bead on top of this swivel so that this weight doesn't crash into it and mess up your knot, okay? Uh, and also the, the swivel doesn't get stuck inside the weight if you have a bigger weight. So you should have a bead on here. We had no beads today, so we didn't put a bead on. Yeah. You, know, you got to do what you got to do, right, guys? Uh, so that was we caught those two big jacks. So that was great. That worked out really well. And then we also, of course, always have, we're always trolling around our... Your Zuri, Darcy's favorite minnow yes. here. Yes, Zuri 3DB uh, crystal minnow, and this one is suspending. Suspending, yes. So we caught up a, a jack on that. This color works. <laughs> now we were getting just you know you gotta learn while you're out there too and adjust. You know we were out there anchored up and we're breaking off a lot of fish on the bottom because there's a big ledge there. I was on a ledge. I was on some structure, right? We just can't fish in the middle of nowhere. So a couple got bricked off, and then we. Uh, decided to uh, unanchor, and then we just happened to see a big school of jacks right next to us, and we went over there, threw our lines, super and cool. Hooked up real I mean, fast. there was like birds all over, flying, diving. You could see the mullet just getting chased on the surface, and um, we're like, as soon as we were pulling up the anchor, I was like, let's go, let's go, and we both hooked up like right away, double right hook away. up. It was awesome. Yeah. So, so have a plan when you go out there, and so you're not unprepared, but then you know, be prepared to change your plan when you see what happens out there in the water. And that's it for tackle time. Wrap it up. Yeah, so I guys, hope you enjoyed this fishing episode. We had a lot of exciting action out there today. We caught all assortments of fish, and Brian even caught a bird in the beginning. So, you know, can't beat that. We had a lot of, we had a very successful day of that fishing. Was on, that was on a gambler easy swimmer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> on his wing, got caught on his wing, but he, somehow he flew into your line. Anyways. I was, I was casting, and he just flew through my line. Yeah, oh, you know, at least we didn't get bit by the bird. That's good. Pelicans have some sharp beaks. Um, but we did have a great day out there and, um, you know, explored the area. We'll definitely be back there soon fishing again. And, um, yeah, we'll be back tomorrow with another episode. So if you like this video, give it a big thumbs up if you learned something, tips or tricks or whatever. That way we know we're doing our job. Subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We have new videos every single day. Uh, so we'll be back tomorrow. And until our next adventure, follow your dream and keep on catching.